Hey everybody at BV Matson here, day one of the teardown of the 1967 CB77 Super Hawk. Before we tear everything down, highly suggest you go get yourself a camera of some sorts and start taking a ton of pictures. And what you want to do is be taking photos of the most intricate of intricate of details. You never know what you're going to catch in your photos. They're going to help you a ton as you get back together here. I'm taking a look at this brake stay on this. I'm just taking a ton of pictures. On my first motorcycle build, I took over 1,500 photos of just how everything went together. So right off the bat, you're going to get all the photos of everything. And then as we disassemble, we're going to keep great track of everything happening there as well. These photos are going to be a great reference for you as you start putting things back together. Shoot in a grid pattern, up and down, side to side, all the way around. All right, once you've done kind of a grid format of taking all the photos, it's time to get the expensive stuff or the stuff you don't want to damage off. So right off the bat, we're going to take care of the seat. You can see on the seat, it's got a couple of puncture holes. Not sure if those are going to be patchable or if I'll end up just recovering this whole thing, but look at this seat pan, absolutely crazy. So I want to start being really organized with all the parts. <clears throat> now, of course, one of the next most valuable things is this gas tank, so let's get this out of there as well. Just like so many Hondas, these gas tanks are going to get hung up if you don't go underneath and get rid of the crossover tube. Let me show you this right here. There's a crossover tube that balances your tank, plugs into one side. Make sure you go and pull one of those off. We've covered that extensively in other videos. But here's our tank. We're going to pull that off. We're going to set that aside. And before we lose them, we're going to come up here in the front. We're going to pull off these two rubbers, okay? Don't want to lose these. I've already been kind of looking at parts and sourcing parts. Some of this stuff can be very difficult to find. There's going to be two of them. They're going to go right into a bag and labeled right away. One of the things you don't want to do is just tear these bikes apart. All right. Take your time in disassembly, marking and labeling, and it's going to go so much easier when you put it all back together. So I'm just going to mark this one. Gas tank rubbers. Just like that, grab myself my Ziploc bag, drop these into the bag and drop them in with a label telling you, stay organized from the get-go. With the tank and seat out of the way, now would be a great time to go back and start taking a bunch of pictures shooting down so we have kind of a documentation of everything happening there. Next steps as far as removal goes, I would say make sure you get your rear brake light lens out of the way. Look at this little cutie right here. <laughs> Not a crack in it. Don't want to break those. Saw one for, I think, 30 bucks online the other day. So that's 30 bucks. The other thing that we really want to take care of on this bike, because it's so beautiful, are these gauges and the headlight bucket, okay? This headlight bucket appears to be in great shape. I want to get that in a safe place so I don't uh, nick it up because you don't wanna like drop a wrench accidentally or something terrible and break these gauges. These gauges aren't cheap. I've seen them anywhere from like two to $500. So uh, be careful with that. So let's just start taking off the valuables. JIS screwdrivers, not Phillips screwdrivers. Use JIS, it's gonna save you a ton of headaches. All right, next up, I really want to get this gauge out of here. So again, using GIS screwdriver, looks like these two screws, there's one on each side. It's going to hold this gauge in and I'm going to treat it with kid gloves for sure. Really two small, little, 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 little screws. Don't want to lose those. And this hopefully is going to lift up. Yeah, let's get you a better view. All right, it seals a little bit dried and cracked to be expected, but this whole unit 
should start pulling right up. So that's gonna come out. Gotta get the headlight bucket out as well. So we're gonna come underneath here and take our two bolts out. Very similar to the 350s. JIS screwdriver is gonna mean you're not gonna strip out a ton of screws and stuff. And take those down there, keep all of this hardware together. We'll bag all of this together. There's just these two here. Kind of keep your hand on the headlight bulb so it doesn't fall. Let's pull this off. And there we go. Wow, very simple wiring when you don't have signals on a bike. Look at this. This is about as clean as it goes, but we've got a couple connectors here to clean up. Here we're looking inside the headlight bucket. Oh my God, how simple things get when you don't have to have signals. <laughs> There's our connectors for our gauges, our speedo and our tack. I'm gonna go ahead and take those off and we should be able to lift that gauge out. Looks like there may be a couple of light connectors there as well. So we'll go ahead and follow those through to the harness and uh, clean that all up. It should all go lickety split. And just to make sure I don't muck anything up, a little rag over a pair of pliers broke those cable connectors loose. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a label on each one of these because I'm sure length matters with this stuff. So I'm just made a tag for Speedo and Tack so I don't get it mixed up. At first look here too, the wiring all looks really, really good. Do you think I might get away with uh, not replacing the wiring harness. I mean, look at how clean everything is. Everything's looking really, really good so far. It's time to get this gauge out. You all know I love my details. Check this out. So you've got a wire here, green wire, I would assume is ground, and a green wire. Those actually are coming together. They're spliced together inside of this bucket. Let me show you this right here. And they actually come right down into one of our green pods right there. So pretty simple connection there. Couple other connectors. We've got the greens disconnected. That was all just a single right here. There also looks to be a high beam, some kind of an indicator. It might just be the backlight. It's a blue light off of the headlight. That's going straight into here. You can pull that out just like that. That's gonna again free up our gauge. We got this blue wire here and taking a look inside here there is one more green that's coming through and that is also tied into the headlight bucket there's a there's a grounding cable right here like that okay so that actually just goes into a male female single lead and that's going to pull out right there while we're at it we might as well get rid of the headlight and that's just our single red right here I'll go ahead and put this in the box. And there you go, you disconnect that and our gauge lifts right out. Not gonna lie, I am in like with these gauges. Obviously this weather seal is gonna have to go on to the list of things to buy because that is pretty dry cracked. I'm not sure that's salvageable, but how awesome are these gauges? All built into one unit. Honda Motor logo there, and uh, you know, Tack on the left, Speedo on the right. Overall, look at that, I just can't, I'm blown away by how clean all this wiring looks. Amazing, let's see if there's an inspection date. Hard to read, but yeah, it's good to go. This is money right here, this gauge. Just worth showing you, looks really, really good. I can't wait to polish it up, the chrome. I think we're gonna be able to clean that up, make that look good, but that seal will have to get replaced for sure. All right, we're really close to getting the headlight bucket out of this thing. Just a couple of other things hanging us up. We have our high beam indicator, I believe. Yeah, that would probably be the high beam indicator. Could be a signal indicator as well. Again, I've never worked on one of these and I'll find out as I dive into things. But here we've got a black coming out of this light. And that is going into a black with a white indicator. So these wires have blacks and whites. So they're a black wire with a white insulator. Looks like they're all coming out of the main harness into this multi-connector. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to pull these out. Be careful when you're trying to pull these out. The insulator on this one looks like it might be a little snug. There's one. And then we've got our green red, which typically wasn't green red, the neutral white. 
pretty sure I can pull this out. Try to be as gentle as possible. Easier said than done, because some of these connectors don't want to move. Sometimes you want to wiggle them back and forth just a little bit. And there we go. So there's our light indicator. And this will actually just screw right out of here. There's a little rubber boot you want to be kind of careful of. You don't want to mangle that up. There's that little boot. This is in perfect shape. Looks good. And there's going to be a plastic nut on there, just like the 350s. It's impossible to see, but a 14 millimeter is gonna get you a long way so far. There's that little plastic nut up here. It's a 14, be very careful with these. It's really brittle right here, plastic, okay? It will break, we got that out. And then up on top, we've got our little lens. So we're gonna go ahead and tie this all together just like that and put that together with that little light that we just took out. The remaining pieces is this on off switch right here on the top. A bunch of wires coming out of here. We got pink, yellow, black, white, and a green, just for reference. So let's go ahead and see if we can pull these apart. These are, man, the wiring on this is so simple. It's absolutely crazy. There we go, our bucket should be clean. So far on this build, I have only needed a 14 millimeter, if I grab the right one. Uh, everything I've touched so far has been a 14 millimeter, so this is awesome. I've loosened these up, we can go ahead and pull this bucket out now. Pull these two bolts out. Previously, this thing has obviously been reassembled. Here on this one, we've got a locking washer, and here we've got just a washer, so want to refer to CMSNL probably and go figure out what's the proper orientation and what is the equipment needed for that. But now we've got an intact bucket here that we can slide out of place. Let me get you a better view and we'll pull the wiring out. All right, being careful. I would love to be able to just save this harness. This looks like a little bit of a wiring finagle coming here from this red and yellow. Should be able to just pull this all right straight through. Let's get these cables out. The cables are going in from the bottom. That's a good thing to note. I wanna keep all these wires clean and keep track of where the heck everything is kind of coming from. We'll take some more pictures for sure. There's one cable out, out of the bottom. Tough to give you a shot, but those cables are out now. And let's see. It should all just go straight back out. Just like that, we've got ourselves our bucket out. The bucket on this one is in fantastic shape. These are metal. Love the metal, man. How many of those plastic cracked ones do we have to deal with on other bikes? There's a couple of rubber kind of grommets or little uh, kind of seals there. Want to refurb all of that stuff. But other than that, man, this, blow, this wiring being so clean is just blowing my mind. Look at that. Oxidation. We're gonna be painting this whole darn thing. We'll get this switch out and stuff once we get to that stage. But for now, we can go ahead and put that in the box. All right, one piece at a time. So making a little bit of progress there. We got the valuables off there. I was just kind of looking around like these little details right here are what are so important for real assembly. So here is a little bracket that goes in to your carb mount that actually holds your spark plug wire, okay? So remember that and that's tailing in. So that's the kind of stuff that I'm really looking for at this point are just these nuances. I love that word and this bike is gonna be full of them. Looking at this, I'm kind of like, what the hell is going on here? I'm gonna be taking lots of pictures and really taking my time. Now that I've got kind of the valuable stuff off, it's time to get to the WD-40 or Deep Creep or whatever, but it's time to start hitting major connections because things are gonna start getting real, <laughs> real, real quick. So again, just get around this whole bike, hit anything that you think is gonna need to move and, uh, yeah, it's gonna save you. Give that a uh, little bit of time to kind of soak in and then we can start diving into some other things. 
take your time and hit all the connections, even if you don't think you'll touch it, hit it with the WD anyway. All right, there you go. We've got the valuables off, the stuff that's expensive to replace if you muck it up. We can start moving on to some other things. This video is getting a little long at this point, so look for part two. <laughs> We'll get to it. We're gonna keep on going. Next steps is really probably getting the exhaust off, start getting this thing lower to the ground. So hopefully we can start to tackling this motor to get that motor out of there. So many more videos to come on the 1967 CB77. Made a little dent in it, didn't take too long. But man, the parts are gonna start adding up and our box it's starting to get a little full. Hope you enjoyed the video. If so, don't forget to subscribe. Also, find us on Facebook, the uh, Keep On Wrenching Community Group on Facebook. Would love to see you join. Also, don't forget to visit keeponwrenching.com and request that free sticker. I hope you'll join me for this build. This one's going to be a fun one. See you in the next video or live stream.